everybody. This is Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet. And today I want to show you how to make this beautiful cabled cowl. This is made of 100% baby alpaca and is really super soft. Well, let me go ahead and show you how you can wear this and then I'll show you what you're going to need. For this project, I'm going to be using some lovely DK weight baby alpaca yarn, and this is from Eternity Ranch Knits. And um, you can look at the video description below. Kits are available through lambshopkits.com should you be interested in that. And I'm, al I'm also recommending that you have a size G or 6 or 4.00 millimeter crochet hook, and as always, a yarn needle and a pair of sharp scissors handy. To begin, we will start with our slip knot and we are going to chain 23 chains. After completing those chains, we're going to start in the fourth chain, one, two, three, four, fourth chain from the hook and again just crocheting on one side of that chain. We're going to make a double crochet there and a double crochet in each of the remaining chains. You should have a total of 20 double crochets plus the chain 3 at the beginning once you complete this row. After completing those double crochets we're going to turn and begin row 2 with a chain 2 and we are going to work the foundation for our cable. We're going to skip the first stitch and we are going to work a front post double crochet around each of the next four stitches. This is definitely a wider cable than I'm usually crocheting. Okay, so I just want to be clear about that we have four of those stitches. And after we do that, we are going to work a half double crochet in the top loops of the next stitch. And we're going to repeat that uh, a few more times, three more times actually. Front post, double crochet in each of the next four stitches. Half double in the next. So go ahead and repeat that two more times. And three and four and then half double in that top loops of the next stitch. And then we're going to do this one more time. It's one. two, three, and four. And that last half double is going to be worked in the chain, the turning chain. Just want to show you that I'm not going into just a single loop, to a single thread. I'm going into the entire hole here for that half double crochet. Now we're going to turn for row number three, chain two, we're going to not work in this half double, not, not going to work in the first stitch of the rows since that is the border stitch. And we are going to work back post double crochets over each of the next four stitches. And half double that next stitch. And go ahead and repeat that all the way across four back post doubles, half double, four back post double crochets, half double, four back post double crochets, and a half double worked in the chain three turning chain, or chain two turning chain rather. Now we've come to row four and this is the row where we are going to cross our cables. 
Okay, in order to do this, we are going to skip these stitches, half double in this stitch, and then front post treble in these stitches, and then working behind these five stitches, we're going to front post treble in each of these four stitches that we skipped. Then we're going to half double in this stitch, and then we're going to skip the next four stitches. We're going to half double in this stitch. We're going to front post treble in these four stitches, and then working in front of these five stitches, we're going to front post treble in these four stitches, and then half double crochet there at the end. Just want to give you a little vision for where we're going so you'll understand what we're doing. So to begin this row, we're going to chain three. One, two, three. Just one extra chain for these crossing of the cable rows. Skip four stitches, half double in that half double crochet. Now we're going to front post treble in each of these four stitches. Let's start with the first one. And two. And three. Oops, let's try that one again. It got away from me. And the fourth. Now working behind the last five stitches, I'm including the half double in that stitch count, we're going to come behind into this hole right here and we're going to work a front post treble in this stitch, this stitch, this stitch, and this stitch in that order. And I do this by using my thumb and my tall man. I'm using, I'm using my nerve endings in my fingers to help guide the hook with this particular section. Okay, and let's come into that hole again for the next stitch, which is right here. I'm locating it with my thumb and my my finger here, and there we go. That just makes it so much easier, and then just complete the stitch. And for the next one, again, we're coming into this hole, and here's the third stitch. It's three, and then one more. And the last stitch is right there. And after we do that, we're going to half double in that next half double crochet. And let's pause a minute and take a look at what we've just done. Okay, we have just crossed the cable in that manner. Okay, now we're going to skip the next four stitches, half double, and the next half double, front post treble, and the next four stitches. Working in front of the last five stitches, we're going to front post treble in each of these four stitches, starting with this one. And at the end of this row, we work a half double in the turning chain. So let's take a look and see what we've gotten so far. Okay, so our cable has been crossed. I know it does not look like much at this point, but as we add the rows, it will. Let's go ahead and turn for row number five. We're going to chain two, and we are going to work four back post double crochets. We're going back to double crochets. We only use trebles when we cross the cables. For the other rows, we're pretty much using double crochets, back post or front post double crochets for these post stitches. Okay, so we've worked four of those. Now in between the last stitch and the next stitch, this is where the cable was crossed. This is the center of that cable. Just work a half double crochet in the middle, just like that. 
and then we work four more back post double crochets. One, two, three, and four. Now we did add a stitch in here. However, we are going to skip this half double and then just work in this next half double, which is the one in the center, thereby keeping our stitch count consistent. Since we added one, then we didn't use this one, so that kind of cancels out. Now we work four more back post double crochets. This is four. And then another half double in between that last stitch and the next stitch. This is the center where those cables, this cable was crossed. And then four more. You can see it's on the back side. You have to, again, use those nerve endings in those fingers to help you know where to put that hook. Uh, four more back post double crochets. That was one. two, three, and four. And then a half double in that turning chain, just like that. Let's go ahead and turn and take a look at this. And this is what you have after five rows. Okay, now we're going to work a, another repeat of actually row number two. We're going to skip the half double there. We're just going to work four front post double crochets. Ah, this yarn is so soft, I must say. <laughs> this is a pleasure to have passing through my fingers. Okay, and then a half double in this half double crochet right there. And then four more front post double crochets half double in that half double and then we do this all over again I'm just going to tell you four front post double crochets half double in the half double through the top loops and then four more front post double crochets and then work a half double in the turning chain for row seven, it's a repeat of row three, where we chain two. We're going to back post double crochet in each of the next four stitches, half double, back post in the next four stitches, half double, again, working through those top loops, four more back post double crochets, half double, and four back post double crochets, and a half double in the chaining, turning chain. So go ahead and finish row seven. This is what you should have after seven rows. Now for rows eight and nine, we are simply going to repeat the last two rows, but I'll explain. They all begin with a chain two. We're gonna work front post double crochets, half double front post, half double, etc., ending with a half double in the turning chain. And then for row number, um, that was row number eight. So for row number nine, we will be working with the back side facing and we will again chain two, four back post double crochets, half double back post double crochets, half double, etc., all the way across. And then we'll work a half double in the turning chain at the end of row nine. So go ahead and work rows eight and nine. If you absolutely need to see visuals, you can go back and um, I'll put a little time mark right here for row number six and you can watch row six and seven again because it's basically the repeat or it is exact repeat of those two rows. This is what you should have after completing nine rows. Now from this point on we are just going to repeat rows four through nine. That's a six row repeat over and over until we reach the length of our cow. This can be the um, the length that I do. You can make this the, the length that you desire, which may be longer or shorter. You can even make this into a scarf. 
uh, maybe even make it into an infinity scarf and use the buttons that I'm going to be adding later on to just connect an infinity scarf, you know, where it could be either an infinity scarf or it can just be, you know, a regular scarf. So if you need support for the instructions, you can go back to row four. I'll put another time mark right across the bottom here and just repeat rows four through nine over and over until you get the length you desire. I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I will show you how many repeats I have made for my cowl and I will show you what I have. Okay, I have completed this until the cable is approximately 24 inches long. Now if you want to make your cable shorter, you can certainly shorten this or if you want it to be much longer, you can just add additional rows. It's up to you or additional repeats. Now I have repeated rows four through nine, a total of 10 times. And then I repeated rows four, five, six, and seven, one time more. That would be this last cross here. Okay. So now we are going to start working on the ribbing. Now before we begin the ribbing, let's go ahead and chain one and I am going to single crochet in each stitch all the way across, including that first stitch. So let's just work those single crochets. Okay, and I want you to work that last single crochet in the last stitch. Do not work in the turning chain. Okay, after working those single crochets all the way across, I'm going to chain three, one, two, three, and I have turned my work 90 degrees so that I can work across the row ends. And just to be clear, the front side is still facing. In the same place where that last stitch was worked, work one double crochet. In the next row end, work two double crochets. And the next row end, work one double crochet. And then the next work two double crochets. So go ahead and work this all the way until you get to the first corner or the end of the scarf. So one double crochet followed by two double crochets. Let's do that one again. There we go. In the next row end. Okay, I've ended with two double crochets in that last row end, so it's time to turn. And the next three rows are worked the same way. We're going to chain two. We're going to skip the first stitch because we're going to go into front post stitches by working a front post double crochet followed by a back post double crochet. And that will be our repeat. I'll do this a few times for you. Front post double crochet followed by a back post double crochet. And you can see that gives it a nice ribbing effect. So go ahead and work this all the way across the row. When you get to the last, let me show you the end of the row. We are going to work a half double crochet in that turning chain, turn. And then after we turn, Every time you see a front post double crochet, you're going to work a front post. And when you have a back post, you're going to work a back post all the way across the row. So go ahead. This is row two. Go ahead, work row two, three, and four in the same way. So after completing the rows on the one side, I went ahead and I attached with the front side facing and I have worked the same rows along the other side of the scarf. Now I'm going to turn and I'm going to have the back side facing and we are going to start with a row of single crochets across and we're going to work one in each row ending. It's three and four and I'm going to bring these strands to hide later and then I'm going to work one single crochet 
going over that foundation chain and I'm going to be working one in each chain and if you're not sure where that is find where that stitch was and work opposite of that stitch so go ahead and work these single crochets all the way across the row at the end of this row you should have a total of 30 single crochets so now it's time to turn the front side facing and we're going to chain two one two and what we're going to do is we're going to work front and back post double crochets by working around each of those stitches front post double crochet and then come into the back side work back post double crochet even though these are only single crochets this can be done okay and there we go might be a little bit trickier but very much doable so go ahead and work the front and back post double crochets all the way across and I will show you how this row ends I've ended the row by working a front post double crochet and then I'm also going to go over into the chain one area and I'm going to work a half double crochet okay so this is what you should have at the end of that row let's go ahead and turn now we're going to work the next row which will establish the location of the four buttonholes we're going to chain two we're going to skip the first stitch we're going to work a back let me try that again back post double crochet and then a front post double crochet now we're going to chain three one two three and we're going to skip three stitches one two three and then we're going to resume over the next four stitches the pattern stitch which is one two three and four of the front and back post stitches okay and then we're going to do another buttonhole chain three one two three skip three one two three and then resume pattern stitch again this time starting with a back post double crochet and then a front post we're going to work the next four stitches okay so we'll get some more yarn here so we've worked let's just back up a minute we worked the first or the two stitches skip three did a chain three we worked four stitches in pattern stitch skip three stitches chain three one two three those are the skip stitches two three yep just verifying and then we work the next four stitches then we're going to do this again chain three skip three one two three and then we're going to work the next four post stitches so front post back post front post there we go and then back post and for our last buttonhole chain three and skip three one two three and then we're going to work the last stitches one two three and go ahead and work a half double crochet in that space so let's go ahead and verify we have four buttonholes one two three four okay now we're going to turn again coming back to the front side facing chain two one two and we're going to resume the pattern stitch again front post back post front post and now in this space where the three stitches the three chains were worked we're going to work three half double 
crochets. And that's what we're going to do across. But make sure that you work front post, double crochets over the front post and back post over the back post. And then we're going to work three half double crochets in that space. And I just want to let you know the reason I'm not using double crochets is because of the height of the stitches. And by using the half double crochets, it keeps the height even with the stitch work that is going on. It's all about consistency. Okay, now we do back post, front post, back post, front post. And then we come again to the chain three, we work three half double crochets in that space. And you can see that's certainly plenty of space for a for a one inch to even perhaps a one and a half or, or one and a quarter inch size button, depending on what you choose. Now, if you're going to choose larger buttons, of course, you would have to alternate the size um, you know, of your buttonhole just simply by making it larger um, by including more stitches in that opening. And the last three half doubles in the last buttonhole. And then we work a back post double crochet and a front post double crochet and then a half double in the turning chain. Let's get through all the strands. There we go. And see how nice that looks. I'm going to go ahead and finish the next row. Chain two, turn, and just continue working, alternating front and back post. Front. When you get to the half double crochets, just continue the alternating front post, back post, front post, back post, just the way we've been doing as we work across. At the end of this row, work a half double crochet in that turning chain, and then we're going to fasten off with the chain. I'm actually going to do two just to be safe, and cut a generous strand so that we can hide that strand once we complete this project. Okay, so you can see the end with the buttonhole openings. Now we're going to join our yarn to the other side with the back side facing, just like we did on the side with the button openings. The only difference for this side is we are going to work the same rows, but without buttonhole openings. We're just going to work straight uh, ribbing. So let's go ahead and chain one, and we're going to go ahead and single crochet in that first stitch, or the row ending, and we're just going to crochet one stitch in each row ending, just like we did on the other side. And let's go ahead and work single crochets in each stitch. I'm just working over a strand. I think that's enough there. So go ahead and work this all the way across. Now for the next row, which begins the ribbing, we're going to chain two and we are going to work front post, double crochet, followed by a back post, double crochet, just the way we did working the other side. Front post, followed by a back post. So go ahead and work that all the way across. We end this row with a front post double crochet and in the turning chain we're going to work a half double crochet. So this row begins with a back post double crochet and then a front post and we're just going to alternate that all the way across and then we're going to repeat the row before this and this one more time 
after this. So this on the finishing rows, this will be row two and that's row three. So we're going to work um, rows two and three one more time after I complete this row and then go ahead and fasten off. I wanted to show you the finished edge after completing it. Now you may put the buttons anywhere you would like really on the scarf, but to have it worn as shown, what you would do is cross the front like this and then line up each of the buttons along the side of the scarf here for the buttonholes. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But before I do, let me go ahead and show you how to hide some of these loose strands of which I have several. All right, I'm just gonna show you one here and I like to use a yarn needle. Now, if you're, um, you know, this yarn is on the thin side, so you can almost use a darning needle like this if you'd like, but I'm gonna stick with my yarn needle for now. And I'm just going to run this stitch carefully down into the stitches along the side. And they should be fairly well hidden. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And you can see right away that knot is gone. And now I'm going to go the opposite direction. I have not pulled this super tight, just to let you know. I just am very gentle as I'm hiding these stitches. All right, so I've gone back up into the stitch work and just pulling it gently. I think that should be fine to hide. So now I'm going to gently clip that thread and it is hidden now. Make sure that you do not clip your stitches as you do that. And that stitch is hidden. So now I just have to get the rest of them and sew on my buttons and then I'll show you what I have. Well, hope you enjoyed making this cabled cow with me today. If you did, please comment in the comment sections below. God bless. Bye-bye.